All right, folks, let's start video number three of the lazy man's way to find out how to generate income during the session. Your instructor, Mansur Sohail, welcomes you. Let's dive in. So here is the question. How do economists determine whether the economy is in a recession? Let's look at it. Recession indicators. It has become commonly accepted that a recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth. They should be cautiously viewed as an informal and imperfect guideline for investors. The reason that negative real GDP growth is inappropriate to explain a recession is that there is typically a self-perpetuating cycle of rising defaults as well as unemployment in a recession. Absent those factors, negative GDP growth need not be all that damaging for either investors or consumers. For that reason, the NBER, National Bureau of Economic Research, a nationally recognized private research organization that officially declares recessions, uses a variety of criteria applied in a subjective fashion. The National Bureau of Economic Research defines the term recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across economy. So we are going to look into the criteria to determine recession. The criteria provide some further guidance as to what constitutes a recession and includes five observable and measurable conditions. So let us look at these five conditions. Number one, a decline in real GDP. Number two, decline in real income. Number three, decline in employment. Number four, decline in industrial production. And number five, decline in wholesale retail sales. If the GDP falls, then the economy of a country will tend to shrink and constitute recession, which can mean pay freezes and lost jobs. Let us take a look at decline in real income. It is not a secret that recession can have a devastating effect on profile on people's finances. One of the most serious impacts of a recession is the decline in real income, which can have a ripple effect on the entire economy. In this module, we will explore how a decline in real income affect individuals and the economy during a recession and what can be done to help. So what exactly is real income? Real income is the amount of money that a person has after adjusting for inflation. In other words, it is the amount of money that a person can actually spend on goods and services. During a recession, real income tends to decline as prices go up faster than wages, leaving people with less money to spend. So let's talk about the impact of a decline in real income. When real income declines, it can have a number of negative effects. For individuals, it can mean less money to spend on everyday necessities like food, clothing, and housing. This can lead to increased debt and financial hardship. For the economy as a whole, a decline in real income can lead to a decrease in consumer spending, which can further exacerbate the recession. So what can be done? While there are several measures that can be taken to help mitigate the effects of a decline in real income during a recession, the government can provide financial assistance to those in need, such as employment benefits or tax breaks. Additionally, businesses can offer incentives to their employees, such as bonuses or raises. And finally, individuals can look for ways to save money 
such as cutting back on non-essential spending or taking advantage of discounts and deals. So to conclude, a decline in real income during a recession can have a serious effect on individuals and the economy as a whole. It is important to be aware of the potential consequences and take steps to mitigate them by providing financial assistance, offering incentives, and looking for ways to save money. Individuals and businesses can help to reduce the impact of a recession on their finances. Let's look at decline in employment. How does decline in employment happen during recession? When the economy takes a downturn, it can have a huge impact on employment. During a recession, businesses tend to cut back on staff, meaning that many people can find themselves out of work. This can be a difficult time for those affected as they struggle to make ends meet and find new employment. So how does decline in employment occur during a recession? Reduction in demand. During a recession, demand for goods and services tends to decrease. This means that businesses have less need for employees as there is less work to be done. This can result in business reducing their staff members, either through layoffs or through not replacing those who leave. This is often the first step in a decline in employment. Let's talk about cost-cutting measures. When demand decreases, businesses often look to reduce their costs in order to remain profitable. This can involve cutting back on staff, as wages are often one of the biggest expenses for businesses. This can lead to employees being laid off or businesses reducing the hours of existing staff. Let's talk about lack of investment. During a recession, businesses may be reluctant to invest in new staff. This is because they may be uncertain about the future of the economy. And so they may be reluctant to take a new staff or to invest in training. This can lead to a decline in employment as businesses are not creating new job opportunities. What about the competition for jobs? Let's talk about that. When there is a decline in employment, it can lead to increased competition for jobs. As there are fewer jobs available, more people are applying for the same positions. This can make it harder for those looking for work to find a job, as they may be competing with many other applicants. Job automation. Let's look into that. So folks, as you know, technology is becoming increasingly advanced. This can lead to job automation. This means that businesses can use technology to do jobs that were previously done by humans. This can lead to a decline in employment as businesses no longer need to hire staff to do those jobs. So as a conclusion, Decline in employment can be a difficult time for those affected as they struggle to make ends meet and find new employment. It can be caused by a reduction in demand, cost-cutting measures, lack of investment, increased competition for jobs, and job automation. Understanding the causes of a decline in employment can help those affected to understand the situation and to take steps to find new employment. Let's take a look at decline in industrial production. How does decline in industrial production happen during a recession? You may ask. Well, the industrial sector is an important part of any economy. It is responsible for producing the goods and services that are essential for a country's economic growth. During a recession, Industrial production often takes a hit. This can have a ripple effect on the entire economy. When a recession hits, 
consumers tend to cut back on their spending. This means that companies have to reduce their production levels in order to keep up with the reduced demand. This leads to a decrease in industrial production. Another factor that contributes to a decline in industrial production during a recession is a decrease in availability of credit. During a recession, banks are less willing to lend money, which makes it harder for businesses to finance their operations. This can lead to a decrease in production levels as businesses are unable to purchase the necessary materials and equipment to keep up with demand. So the question is, what is a fix to decline in industrial production? The good news is that there are ways to combat a decline in industrial production during a recession. And one of the most effective ways to do this is to increase government spending. This can help to boost demand for goods and services, which can help to increase production levels. Another way to help increase industrial production is to provide tax incentives to businesses. This can help to encourage businesses to invest in new technology and equipment, which can help to increase production levels. Finally, it is important to ensure that businesses have access to credit. This can help to ensure that businesses have the funds they need to purchase the materials and equipment they need to keep up with demand. Overall, a decline in industrial production during a recession can have a significant impact on the entire economy. However, there are ways to combat this decline and help to ensure that businesses are able to keep up with demand. By increasing government spending, providing tax incentives to businesses, and ensuring that businesses have access to credit, it is possible to help to boost industrial production and help the economy to recover from a recession. And finally, let us talk about decline in retail sales. Decline in retail sales during a recession. What causes it and how can it be fixed? When the economy takes a downturn, it is not just businesses that suffer. Retail sales also take a big hit. As consumers tighten their purse strings, retail sales decline, leaving shop owners and retailers struggling to stay afloat. But what causes this decline in retail sales? During a recession, and what can be done to help? Let us take a look. So why does retail sales decline during a recession? The main reason for the decline in retail sales during a recession is that consumers are less likely to make purchases when their finances are tight, which is quite understood. With unemployment on the rise and wages stagnating, consumers have less disposable income to spend on non-essential items. This means that even when retailers offer discounts and promotions, consumers are still reluctant to make purchases. Another factor is consumer confidence. When the economy is in a downturn, consumers become more cautious with their spending. They are less likely to buy items that they don't absolutely need and instead opt to save their money for more essential items. This lack of confidence in the economy can further contribute to the decline in retail sales. So is there anything that we can do to help? The first step is to focus on creating a sense of security for consumers. This can be done by offering incentives such as discounts and promotions, as well as providing customers with a sense of security by offering free returns and exchanges. By making consumers feel secure in their purchases, retailers can encourage them to make more purchases. Another way to help is to make sure that retailers are providing customers with the best possible shopping experience. This means offering helpful customer service, making sure that products are easy to find, and providing a pleasant shopping environment. By making the shopping experience 
as enjoyable as possible. Retailers can encourage customers to make more purchases. And finally, retailers should focus on building relationship with their customers. This can be done by providing personalized recommendations and offering loyalty programs. By showing customers that they value their business, retailers can encourage them to make more purchases. So to conclude, when the economy takes a downturn, it can have a major impact on retail sales. But by providing consumers with a sense of security, offering incentives, and building relationships with customers, retailers can help to counteract the decline in retail sales during a recession. So folks, thank you for watching. I will meet you in the next lecture.